Yeah, sick. Um, so uh, basically, markets have really shaped up. Um, didn't really want to make a full on video kind of going through it. I don't think it's necessary at this point. I think towards the end of the week, when I did an end of week recap, um, we can kind of have a look at how everything's played out. But just kind of just, you know, zooming through everything, uh, the DXY is somewhat giving signals of a sell off at the moment. Um, if we do have a strong pullback, a flag and push up, then, you know, obviously we can move into this high time frame. Um, upwards momentum towards this high or even to that level there so that's one thing I'm keeping in mind obviously right now DXY is trading below this low so DXY is pretty simple um, Aussie CAD um, yeah I mean Aussie CAD just kind of rebounded now gave a lot of momentum here hit some news as well um, of the Canadian news so uh, yeah just kind of give it a little bit more volatility and then push it a little bit further and now we're just creating continuation we could potentially see a rejection at these level of highs so you know just bearing in mind that this can basically form as a flag continue higher could bounce off some 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 future news whatever doesn't really matter. Uh, USD Swiss. Uh, USD Swiss is pretty nice as forecasted. You know, we had a push down, create a flag, push down again, creating another flag over here. Um, is there a potential entry over here? Now, that's one that I am considering. I mean, you know, we do have, you know, some sort of flag like this um, forming in because we are coming into that low. I wouldn't expect. Well, price can do two things. We can either just sell off, continue in line with the DXY, which will give us good momentum for the sell and start this big run or um you know or, or a few other things obviously bear in mind we do have some news today as well um you know it's, it's not very very high impact news but obviously it is still news gdp growth rate um, quarter on quarter and durable goods order month on month so obviously you know with with the forecast as it is usually it gets priced in however this can create that volatility to the downside so you know just obviously bear in mind when the us market opens today it's going to be pretty good so that's one thing i'm banking on if we can push up higher get to this point and then sell that's something i'll be more interested in over here there's a better sell over here um anyway being pretty patient that's usd swiss the next one is uh euro gbp euro gbp is nice um i did say i wasn't gonna do a full one but ended up doing it anyway um yeah euro gbp um euro beat gbp euro gbp euro euro gbp mm nice um not really much to say to be honest you know I, i'm strong put on this still uh no sorry not on this um on gbp pairs but with euro gbp obviously it does look like we are having that slow sort of gradual decline um have we had our one two are we creating a flag you know in the sense of um you know something in this sort of angle that's a question to to kind of consider um who knows? I mean, at this point, it's still a bit premature. I think we are selling off ever so slightly. We could potentially have rejection here to go higher. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if this something like this did happen and then we sold. So, um, like I said, I'll be on my management game. Be patient um, and just see how that plays out. Euro AUD. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice, actually, to be honest. There was a nice little rebound over here. We pushed up. We came back down. Pretty corrective. Uh, we are still squeezing now. This is a nice little flag over here. This is some good structure in there. So, could this be the flag hover whatever we want to call it to the downside possibly with that corrective move there it's not really the sort of move that i really want to entertain i would really wait for that line in the sand wait for a flag down here so that's me um but possibly that could be a good trade right now um we are currently at about 9 15 so um yeah i mean depending on how you'd want to take that personally it's not really one i would take just purely because we haven't really met that high there it's not major significance but yeah it's not my top of trade um gbp new zealand dollar not really a trade on the table for me either um just kind of correcting this could be some sort of just messier correction to the upside so be patient with that one bullish uh gbp aussie um gbp aussie yeah nice little middle section to this free touch i like this uh this is something which is quite nice actually when you look at it in hindsight it's not the cleanest but we've pushed down large structure creating this inner structure push down correction push up sell off so i think we could potentially be making our way back up to this high fill in that take out all those orders up there and then sell off or maybe sell off before that but that's what I'm looking at. 
Next, I'm going to be looking at the wild cards. Um, Aussie, New Zealand. Aussie, New Zealand's are looking pretty nice. Um, I like Aussie, New Zealand because, you know, we've had that scoop. We have that near miss, though, which does kind of bother me a little bit. But it is what it is because we have filled in the point of sale. But, yeah, I mean, it is just one of them pairs, I guess, you know, where it's just it's just sold off at that point. I mean, I will be on my management game. I mean, looking at this, it's moving away pretty corrective. So I wouldn't be surprised if this does find a point of uh, interest and just kind of bounce back up. So eyes on Aussie New Zealand um, for sure. Could there have been an entry in here? Probably not, to be honest. Um, GBP CAD. GBP CAD is nice. Um, you know, we've been forecasting this for a while. We saw this middle section. You know, was there trades in here? Absolutely. Absolutely and absolutely. Now we're at this high value uh, override level of 1.1. 1. 1. Um, the way we've got there is somewhat of a level something I would entertain. However, because we've not really given that impulsive rejection that I was looking for, and we're starting to just kind of correctively squeeze, I'm more inclined to see if we just correct here and then we push up higher. Maybe we have one more push before we push down, create head and shoulders, or we just continue, get some strong GBP momentum. There's no upcoming news really to be aware of. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, GBP is not doing too bad at the moment. So strong bullish on that. Um, Euro USD. Uh, Euro USD is nice. Euro USD is quite nice. I mean, I like the one, two, three inner structure override. You know, this doesn't hold huge validity, but you know, what, what I could say about this is, could this be the correction for the uh, impulse for the correction to go up? It doesn't really look like the normal move. It looks like we'll probably be evolving this ever so much. And, you know, this structure could just kind of develop into something a little bit more. Um, definitely need to reevaluate this if I'm going to be looking to take a trade. Um, Euro USD is pretty much in line with the DXY. So looking at the DXY again, we have broke that sell point. So if this starts selling off, you can bet your bucks that Euro USD could just start pushing up and this could be the beginning of the wave. Now, looking on the high time frame, there is that small inflection point that we see over here that we have met with. So obviously I'm aware that, you know, we've we've rejected from something significant, not major significance, but significance inflection point. We could just create a larger flag to go down. So, you know, this is always a possibility. And I would not be surprised. Something like this would be of interest because we've had an impulse, well, corrective impulse, a larger correction into a correction and then a sell-off. So, you know, that kind of gives it more weight to to the strong pools coming into the market later. But that's what I'll be looking at. EuroCAD, um, same, same situation, large flag to the downside or um, not the sort of reversal start I'd be looking for, to be honest, that corrective leg up. I think reversals could come on this one sooner than I thought. I was looking at you know, some sort of patterns in here didn't quite get what I was looking for. Um, you know, I can actually just show you on hindsight. It's still on the table, just it's not the best to be taking some of these flags now. So I was looking for this sort of one, two, three in a structure to this point here. Push up, push back down. I'm looking for a flag here. We didn't quite get that flag. Then we created something a little bit larger now. So then I was looking for a push back down into this pattern with a flag and then a push out of this pattern with another flag and then out of this low for another flag and then on the hover and then break off this with another flag. And that would have been the gameplay. Very nice, very beautiful, but at the moment doesn't look like it's on the table for me. So um, it's not a trade I'll be taking. It's not a trade I'll be entertaining. So at the moment, I'm just going to stay patient and yeah, just, just really wait. Um, I think... Definitely, this pair has a lot of potential. It's just at the moment, um, yeah, it's it's just it's just doing its thing. Could create another continuation to go higher. EuroCAD, um, I think EuroCAD is actually quite nice. I think EuroCAD definitely has some potential. We've got loads of these sort of inflection points. Where is it going? I think I would look at this point here over here before we do anything. I think we just create something a bit messier. Um, I would be interested to see by Monday, you know, if if something like this forms and we, we kind of push it down here and then we come back up or whatever. You know, th those are the sort of gameplays I'll be looking at. But I think maybe a larger flag to the downside. Obviously, we did have that bullish momentum in the market for the Euros. So could this just be something a little bit messier to go higher? I don't think it's fully developed. So I'm just going to look at these two points here and then just evaluate so, you know, you know, look at this one if we break that we look at that sort of trend line if we break the trend line and we look here and then see what happens and if we push back up we push back up um but at the moment keep it very simple um and don't really want to waste my time with this pair and then same with um usd yen usd yen's okay now because it's kind of just broken out but 
Um, I want to see some some continuation in this, this sort of section here, which I've drawn. Um, and then once I see those flags, I'll be getting involved. But until then, I'm not really, really fussed. Obviously, they are larger flags, could take days to form, but um, they're, they're more so trades I'd be looking for. Um, and then I just put um, GBP Swiss on here because I think GBP Swiss is an underrated pair at the moment. Got a huge amount of potential for the upside. Um, was looking at trades in... Uh, I believe actually it wasn't very far away. Um, there was trading here that I was looking at, uh, and then there was trading here and here. So I think um, at the moment, you know, this is just moving in quite a nice way. I think definitely this has potential to keep going further, and this is the beginning of a massive pair. So um, I think for people who want to get involved in some longer term trades, um, GP Swiss is nice. Um, it's giving some good structure. We had that push up, push down impulse. Um, correction continuation you know it's definitely in a continuation state so good pair um but yeah that's that's basically it